When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel, who had a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashings of lightning, and an earthquake. Now, I, I kind of really dig this. Okay, the angels have their trumpets. The brass section is ready to warm up over here. But then he starts talking about what we saw in the, in the uh, earlier. Maybe remember our being told of the prayers of the saints in the, and uh, and the prayers of the saints were in these bowls of incense that each of the four living creatures and the 24 elders had these bowls and they, they put them on the ground and worship uh, before God. And we looked at those, you know, and, and it, to me, it really opened up my thinking and the prayers of the saints in these bowls. Everybody has a prayer, but we're not all praying the same thing, you know. Some people are praying for the Yankees and other people are praying for another team, you know. It, uh, but then we see in the Bible that the Holy Spirit tells us what to pray. Because the Holy Spirit searches our hearts. The Holy Spirit knows us better than we know ourselves. God is the one who provides what we need. So what is the prayer thing? I believe that God wants to have a flowing, a connection with us. He wants us to love and have this, it says pray, pray continually. So this praying continually, to me, is more of a conversation. You know, he's your best friend and you're talking to him all the time, you know. I used to say, I'd see these old people walking along the street and they'd go, oh, man, they're really getting bad, you know, until I started doing it. But I'm talking to God. <laughs> but, you know, that's how we should be. Not to wait till we get before an altar somewhere, you know, to be able to do that, but have this close relationship with God. And that we're lifting up these prayers so that, uh, and they're not all petitions. They're thanking you, Lord. And, oh, Lord, God, how am I going to do this? Oh, I can do that. oh, yes, thank you, Lord. You showed me how to do it. And um, you, you've mentioned that, Fernando, how God does that with you now. And um, so these prayers, this relationship with Jesus, uh, are are in these bowls that are brought up. So if one person is praying about something and somebody's praying about something else, I don't think it matters. <laughs> God already knows what he's going to do. He knows everything's put in place. What he wants to see is the action <laughs> to me, you know. He wants those bowls to be full, whatever the prayer is. It doesn't matter what it is. We don't have any power to do anything anyway, you know. So where do we get the idea that our prayer is, is going to change the world, you know? This is, it bothers me sometimes when, when we get together. And, and, the, and the yelling out that Fernando and us have talked about. No, you know, it's, it's to be more in one accord. Lord, I praise you, God, what you do. What I see in your mighty hands and what you've created out here and, and how you control the winds and how you do this and that and the other thing. These things are just, oh, to, to know that, that I'm your son, you know, and daughter, whoever it would be, that uh, these are the things that are in the bowls and this is what, what God loves to hear, I think. Here we see the prayers of the saints again, just like we saw back then uh, with the elders down there. And uh, we, that we just read in, in chapter 8. As if God is including the saints, we who have been raptured, in this operation as much as possible. It's kind of like, you know, like uh, you just kind of look at this. Why, why is this in here? You know, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer. Well, incense, why? With the 
with the prayers of the saints on the golden altar before the throne. So you see the incense again and the prayers of the saints before God. Well, why are we there? You know, if God's going to pour out wrath <laughs> on this world, what have we got to do with it, <laughs> you know? Then it goes on, the smoke of the incense together with the prayer, together with, the, and it's making very clear, together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. And it's just like the, the God is just breathing this in, you know, and, and his children. And this is his purpose for all of them. What are the purposes for? He's making a universe. He's making a world and a universe for us, you know. And this was his plan. We are his creation, his children that he loves so much, you know. He loved us before we even happened, you know. And he's and the the prayers are like the response. This is what was supposed to happen, you know. If we didn't respond to him, then we're just running around, could care less about him, and we're not responding to him. But the fact that we have responded now, when he he uh, pours out this wrath and, and this world and changes this world around to be an eternity for us, now he knows that we're ready for it, you know, because of these these prayers. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar. So here's our prayers and the censer and everything. He takes a little fire and throws it in there. Man, you know, we think atomic bombs or neutron bombs or something. The prayers of the saints and, and this incense, and he takes it and throws it on the earth. So that's what I say. It's like he's including the saints in this operation as much as he possibly can. You know, he says, it's not just me. You're a part of this too, and your prayers. That our presence in the aroma of our prayers are very important to God, and that of our own free will. We were created, we were created to love God in our own free will, and that's what he sees. And that is the reason. That's the purpose for the whole thing. These prayers must be evidence of that love. And the prayers of the saints, heated with the fire of the altar, begins the judgments of the seventh seal. I never heard that before. I didn't realize that. That that's what he used. <sighs> and the prelude was thunder, lightning, and a terrible earthquake. <laughs> I believe our prayers should always include that which pleases God. If we realize that what are in, the, in these bowls and, and what God it's really cares about in our prayers, then maybe we eliminate some of the garbage we put in there, you know? The, you know, so much that we don't need to have in our prayers, you know? And maybe we should trim it down that, that should be prayers that are pleasing to God, which is a pleasing aroma. <laughs> you know, they talk about the incense, the perfume. You know, he wants, this, he, wants, he wants what is pleasing. Prayers of thanksgiving is important, our praises. Prayers of our unconditional love for him. There's no condition. You know, God, I'll love you if. <laughs> Can't be that way. It's got to be unconditional. And especially prayers that his will be done and not our own. So just cut it down, you know. Praises for what he does. Unconditional love for him. And then that whatever it is, God, your will be done. Show me your will.